Welcome, welcome. My name is Kesslin, if you have not caught that yet. <laughs> um, I'm a women's wellness coach and I have the honor of being able to talk on Thursdays about nourishing our bodies. And so last week I posted something about this idea of advocating for your health and becoming the expert on your health and how that can play into your overall wellness that are you know, all aspects of our wellness, as I'm sure all of you know, are connected, our mind, our body, and our soul. And so being able to really advocate for yourself, we're going to get into like what that means exactly in your body's health is so, so important. And really it's, it's about empowerment of you. And so if we lack confidence or we feel like we're not knowledgeable enough in something, then that can really show up and our body suffers from it. So my goal for the next several weeks is that I'm going to be focusing in on a specific topic to help make you the expert of your hormones. And so today we're going to be going through the endocrine system and the eight primary hormones that all women have and that are huge components in how you function mentally, physically, all of it. Um, we are just going to scratch the surface. So please know that, but I have so much more coming for you in the weeks to come. And I, I think this is something that is so, so needed. Um, I'm going to get in a, in a minute, I'm going to get into a little bit of like my story in just this whole hormonal thing. And I remember feeling so just lost. Like I did not understand what anyone, like what people were saying to me, and I didn't even know where to start on what things to ask my doctor. So we're going to talk about that. Maybe you've been in a similar position. Maybe you felt like you don't have control over your hormones. Or maybe you just, it's just like mysterious. Like you know that there's something that hormones do and it's a lot and it's important. We we're not really sure what that looks like. That's okay. It's totally normal. We don't learn this stuff in health class. So I'm excited to dive in. We're going to start with talking about the importance of advocating for yourself how you can start doing that on a mindset level and being able to become confident in really taking care of yourself in this way. And then we're going to talk about the endocrine system, the different parts of the endocrine system, just so you can have kind of foundational overview that when I'm throwing terms out um, throughout the rest of today's training and in the weeks to come, it won't be totally lost to you, <laughs> but you'll be able to feel knowledgeable on it. And then we're going to move into the eight primary hormones that every woman specifically um, has that impacts so much of our lives. And for any guys who happen to be watching this, know that a lot of this does apply to you. It's just slightly different. So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is based off of the female um, monthly menstrual cycle. And... So if you do not have a menstrual cycle, because I know there are women who do not, maybe you've gone through menopause or something else. And so some of this will apply to you, some of it will not. But the reality is, is like you still have all the hormones and you still have all the, the components of the endocrine system we're going to talk about today. And in weeks to come, I will specify like, okay, depending on where you're at in your lifespan and um, different, you know, diagnosis you may have had. These are some things that would apply to you, and these are some things that wouldn't. But know that all of this is just foundational work as we're moving forward. Okay, with that being said, um, I'm going to check and see if we have, like, make sure everything is streaming correctly here, and then um, we will jump into the training. So give me just a second. Okay, good. It looks like we are alive. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to pull up some slides here and we're going to just jump into this. So for anyone watching on the side of this or in the comment section, oh, that's not the right screen share. <laughs> um, there should be a link and that link will take you to a guide that I have put together for y'all. Um, we're going to be kind of going through this together. Any of you who are in my email list already, I don't know why it's not pulling this up who are in my email list already you know that I sent this out yesterday in my weekly emails hmm. technical difficulties 
Okay, I think I think we got it here just like. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to wait and see if this is shown before I keep talking, but so the link in the guide, I send these out in my weekly emails. We're going to go through it together in greater detail. And for anyone who has questions in going through it, I kind of want to just go through it with you guys so that you, if you have any questions, I can answer them here. I'm also going to be doing a and a tomorrow on my Instagram on the same topics. So if you have something that comes to mind later and um, you then want to, ask me about it, feel free to do so. You can always email me or message me as well. I'm happy to um, give you as much guidance as possible because I want this to not just be an educational topic or just an educational training. I want you to feel educated because I want you to be empowered to implement this and to really transform your whole well-being. And something we don't realize is that hormones are actually such a huge component in our emotions and our mental health and our physical health. Like literally you'll see as we start talking about them, like they regulate everything. Like they are involved in every function of our body, conscious and non-conscious. So I'm excited. I think that this is something that so many of us don't maybe even realize that we have imbalances in. And once you start doing things to support your hormones, um, I think you'll notice just how much your hormones may have been imbalanced to begin with. Um, hello, Janu. I'm so glad that you're here live. I, I always love your support. And I think this topic is going to be really great for you too, because we've talked a little bit about that. Okay. Advocating for your hormonal health. I'm going to jump on in. Come back to that. Um, some of these pages are just in the guide and they're not going to go very well for the thing. So I'll just explain them as we go through the training. Being your own advocate. I'm going to give you guys a little, like, I just want you to imagine this for a second. Okay. And tell me in the comments, like, if you feel like you've been in a similar situation before. I'm going to read this because I think that it was just <laughs> written out in the best and I'm, I'll butcher it if I just say it. So Here's the problem with our healthcare industry. Let's think of it like a scene from a movie, all right? You are the main character here. You feel a negative symptom. Let's say it's pestering migraines, okay? So you call up your local clinic and you're scheduled for a visit with a doctor. It probably takes you several days or weeks to get in with your doctor. And when you do, you spend a good, amount, good half hour or more in the waiting room filling out paperwork before being called to the back to fill out even more paperwork. And after what seems like hours, the physician comes in, reviews your paperwork yet again, and takes a few measurements of your vitals. You have maybe a few minutes together, and then you are diagnosed with your issue. Your doctor tells you some long name for what it must certainly be causing the headaches, and this might be a name that you understand or are familiar with, or maybe it's not. And then your doctor sends you on your way with either a prescription to cure you or a well-wishing sentiment to come back in if it doesn't subside soon. Does this sound familiar to any of you? I know I have definitely been in this situation. Um, I'm not saying that this is entirely bad. We definitely have a need for the work that doctors do in this regard. And I always recommend any of my clients, like if you think you have something especially hormonally wrong, go get a diagnosis because until we know what the issue is, we can't move forward with it. What I want to bring attention to with this is just how there's this disconnect. There's kind of this bridge that is missing in our healthcare that really is you. You, in many times in these situations, probably feel a little bit disempowered, like you don't know enough, like you're not the expert on it. And when you leave that clinic, it's almost like, okay, where do I go from here? And that is where I want to encourage you today to know what to do in moving forward from that moment when you get a diagnosis or when your doctor says, okay, well, it doesn't seem like anything's really wrong. We're going to, you know, you're fine. Just let me know if it keeps persisting because I've been in those situations. Next week, I'm going to share a little more like on my story with hormones, but just to give you a glimpse at this, uh, several years ago when I was, well, Actually, it started like early high school. 
I started getting like r- dizzy spells. Um, I actually passed out a couple of times and I'm like, okay, this probably isn't normal. You know, I had always had really heavy periods and like bad cramps and like terrible <laughs> experience in that time of the month. Um, but then I started getting these other symptoms and I started having hair loss. My hair wouldn't grow. I had, um, I started like having hair growth elsewhere that was not normal. So we're going to get a little TMI in this, you guys. Um, we like, I had all of these different symptoms. I was having chronic pain. I was having fatigue, but really what was getting me is that I wasn't able to play sports because I was having these dizzy spells and I was passing out and it was just coming on at those random times. I remember going from like doctor to doctor and getting test after test done. They thought it was something with my heart. So I had all of these, you know, EKGs done and echocardiograms and it was just a lot. And finally they're like, well, it's nothing major that we can find. So just continue. And, you know, if it keeps getting worse, come back in. And it was always that it was year after year. And you guys, this went on all of my high school, all of my college. And when I had moved out on my own, I remember being kind of freaked out at this because I was, I was living in my own and I worked a a job really early in the morning at the time. And I had just gotten out of the shower and I was getting ready and I passed out, like just cold hard passed out on the tile floor. I don't know how long I was out for, but I remember waking up. I had like hit the back, my back on um, like the corner of this table that was my bathroom. And I'm like, what if I had hit my head? Like nobody would have known. And it took something like that. Like I had taken, you know, five, six plus years of all of these symptoms, knowing they weren't normal, but just passing them off because I didn't know what to do about them. And the doctor said there was nothing I could really do and that I was fine. And I believed them. And then I realized, you know what, like this is not normal and this is scary. And sometimes it takes something extreme for us to make a change. It takes something extreme for us to realize that we do need to take charge of our health and advocate for ourselves. So I remember I started doing all of this research and I brought it into my doctors and I said, okay, I don't think it's this. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's this. Um, I kind of self-diagnosed myself with this. So I'd like to get some tests done. And my doctor, like, she was like, okay, yeah, whatever. She did run the test for me. I was convinced it was something hormonal at that point because I had tried what seemed like everything else. And I remember I had had, um, I asked her for like a list of different hormones I wanted tested and the labs came back. I did not get the labs back. She just called and said, your labs results all came back fine. You're healthy. Your hormones are good. Aren't you so happy? Like, and then she hung up and I remember my spirit being crushed. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever had, had that, like the doctor calls you and it's good news. You should be happy. Right. But I, at this point, I was just like, so distraught. I just wanted a diagnosis. I just wanted somebody to tell me this is wrong so that I could figure out how to fix it. And, oh, I'm going to like get emotional on this because this has been a huge part of my journey. And I'm curious if any of you guys have been in this place where it's like, you know, there's these symptoms going on and you know, something's wrong, but you don't know what it is. And you just want somebody to tell you, okay, this is what it is. Now here's how you can fix it. Well, I did not get a diagnosis. I never have had that full diagnosis. But I decided I was going to educate myself and I was going to take care of myself the best that I could. And so I actually decided, I'm like, well, I'm just going to learn these things. I'm going to go to school for it. And I became a health coach. I started studying everything about the body and understanding it the best that I could. And I dove into hormonal health specifically. And I am now going through um, another certification to really emphasize in on hormonal health. And I am learning so, so much. And as I'm learning it, I'm just like bubbling over to share it with everyone, because I think this is something that everyone should know. And specifically, every woman should know. We should be taught this stuff in health class. We should be taught this stuff growing up in school. And since we're not, I want to help bridge that gap that is missing and make you feel empowered 
to where you don't have to experience those same sort of situations that I was having and just feeling such despair over not knowing where to go and knowing something's not normal with my body, but being told that I'm fine. Okay, so <laughs> continuing on with this whole idea of like this movie scene, okay, and you go into your doctor. How many times when it comes to your own well-being, have you felt like you were just playing a supporting role in someone else's movie? Like you were the actor with only one line, like you were missing the rest of the script, oblivious to how the plot would turn out, unable to question any of it because your role was unimportant. Now it's a little extreme when you write it out that way, but really that's, that's how many of us live our life when it comes to our health. We just kind of go day by day and we expect people to just tell us what line to speak at the time that we're supposed to speak our line, give us the cue. But you don't have to go on living like that. You are the lead actress in your life and you deserve to know all the lines. You deserve to ask all of the questions on your health and you deserve to fully understand what is going on, okay? You deserve to be the expert of your own body. Even if you didn't go to years and years of medical school, no one has the capacity to understand you the way that you understand you. Okay, that is something that I think so many people could benefit from just hearing over and over again and replaying in their mind that no one, no matter how many years of education they have, is going to be the expert on your body entirely because nobody else is you and that in itself is enough for you to be willing to advocate for yourself okay so this is my mission the next few months I'm sharing on all of my social platforms I'm going to be sharing it here in the Facebook group and I'm going to be doing different trainings like this um, to help empower you to step into that lead role of your life and to be the advocate for your own wellness because you deserve it Okay. But the first step to being this advocate and to feeling confident in that is to feel educated. So I'm going to be going through um, today, like I had mentioned, the endocrine system, all the parts of it, kind of just laying the foundation um, in a fun sort of way. It doesn't have to be all like textbook style here. And then I'm going to be going through the eight primary hormones that we all function off of. But before I do so, I'm seeing some people commenting in the chat. So I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> Um, yes, Jenny, I'm glad I didn't bump my head too. I was a scary experience. Oh man. But it's the wake up call I needed. And sometimes, sometimes we have to have that, you know? Um, you have definitely been in that situation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you've been in that situation. Um, my hope is that in being able to like step into this role and share on this topic, I can help people not have to experience as, as much of that. But the reality is, is like your journey is your journey. And I think sometimes, especially like being a coach, we want like coaches want to be able to ease people's pain and to like have them not have to go through that. But sometimes that's taking away your growth and your story by doing that. So of course, we want to be able to guide and like support you. <laughs> and I know you know this because you're a coach too. Um, but yeah, that's, it's tough to be in those situations. But I, in a way, I'm glad you can relate with this. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for your support. Okay. Let's get into the endocrine system. You guys ready for this? Oh my goodness. I'm so ready. Okay. Demystifying the hormones. All right. So, um, as I've said, we're talking about hormones the next few weeks, um, the topics of hormones. So as I've been working with women, coaching them through their health, something that has popped up over and over again is people feel like this, this topic, whenever I bring up the topic of hormones, it's like they don't even know. They don't even want to go there because they just feel like they know so little about it. But our brains really do make it so much more complicated than it needs to be. So we're just gonna break down some key terms so that you can be more confident in how to support your hormones. So first off, the endocrine system itself. Like when I say that word, it's okay if you don't know what some of these words mean. Um, I honestly didn't know what a lot of these words meant until I started studying them. So the endocrine system, 
It's a collection of endocrine glands that produce hormones used as chemical messengers throughout the body to help regulate vital processes, the things that keep us alive, including metabolism, growth, sleep, reproduction, and like pretty much everything else. <laughs> Anything you can think of that your body naturally needs to do to survive, your hormones are probably somehow involved. Okay, so then inside the endocrine system, if we were to break that down further, we have what are called endocrine glands. So endocrine glands, they're the ductless glands that secrete chemical messages, which we're going to learn are hormones, into the bloodstream. Okay, so these messages in the endocrine system, they are secreted from these glands and they, you know, go through the bloodstream and then it's communicating with the rest of your body on what to do, how to survive how to live. So those chemical messages are, are hormones, okay? We're going to call them chemical messengers. Think of it like a mailman, essentially, of the body that are secreted by the endocrine glands and transmitted through the bloodstream via diffusion. And they bind to specific receptor sites in and on target cells and help regulate nearly every function of your body, okay? Let me know in the chat if this is like going over your head or if you guys are comprehending what I'm saying here, because I know it can be a lot. Um, but essentially, if we're like making that really simple, you have these different sites in your body. We're going to show a, a diagram here in a minute where these ductless glands are, the endocrine glands. And they secrete, each of those glands secrete different types of chemical messengers or hormones. And those chemical messengers are like, you know, we can't see them. They're very, very, very small. <laughs> and they're going through your bloodstream and they're telling these different, they're, they have a specific place they're going. It's kind of like they're mailmen, they are carrying letters and they're given a specific address of a home that they are going to. So think of it like that. If they're meant, each hormone, it comes from a certain place and it's meant to go to a certain place. And then once it's there and, you know, the letter is open, the message is received, then the body knows what to do for a specific function. So we'll talk more about hormones a little bit later in the training, um, but I'm gonna give a breakdown now of these different parts of the endocrine system. Um, and these are the areas that create different types of hormones, okay? Okay, so we're gonna start with the um, adrenal glands, which you can see here. And the adrenal glands, so they're located above the kidneys, as you can see, these are the kidneys here. And their primary function is stress response. So I'm actually in a couple of weeks gonna be doing an entire series, like going through all these trainings specifically on supporting the adrenal glands and the adrenals, because this really does like stress if we have elevated levels of stress like most of you have probably heard this but maybe don't know essentially why when we have elevated levels of stress in our life that is directly going to correspond to our obviously our mental health our physical health our emotional health and you know our spiritual health so stress is such a huge component there's been studies and studies and studies done on the impact the major impact of stress there are so many people in the world who eat a fabulously healthy diet. They exercise regularly. They may be doing all of the, you know, things right when it comes to their health, but if they are in a constant state of stress, none of it really matters. So I'll be talking about like, you know, how that works on the hormonal side of things in a few weeks, but anything that we do in this collective for the mind, for the soul, like it is all going to be beneficial for managing your stress levels and um, making sure that your body is not overproducing the hormones that are for stress response. So we'll dive into that more deeper eventually. Um, the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is located in the brain and let's see if I can move that. The thalamus, it says thalamus here. It's in this region right up that way. Um, it's located in the brain. It's functions it functions as the hormone conductor. So if you're thinking of like all oh, the hormones are a part of a song, the 
hypothalamus is really like kind of the one in charge. It's directing everything. It has a very big job. <laughs> um, it's like the liaison between the nervous system and the endocrine systems. And it signals pituitary, the pituitary, which is right here also in this little region. This is a very important part of your brain region. Um, it signals the pituitary to secrete hormones and it helps maintain homeostasis, which is your body's internal balance. So there's a lot in that. Just know the hypothalamus is very important, <laughs> very important. Um, okay, the, we're gonna go to the ovaries and ovaries are right down here. So obviously females have the ovaries, males have the testes. We'll talk about both of them so that you're aware. Um, but as I said, most of the hormones we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be talking about them more in relation to their production from, um, in relation to the ovaries and the natural monthly menstrual cycle that women have. So the ovaries, located in the pelvis region um, above the uterus, and you can see the uterus is here, and um, its primary function is to produce sex hormones in response to messages from the pituitary gland. So you're gonna see as we talk about these that there's many connections. So a lot of um, the different gl glands and organs of the endocrine system that are down in this region are going to be somehow correlated with what's going on in the brain. And as you remember, the thalamus I mentioned is kind of the liaison between the endocrine system and the nervous system, which basically means that it helps kind of translate those messages. If you're thinking, let's think of it this way, <laughs> the hormones in the endocrine system, okay? It's kind of like a specific type of language. And then you have the nervous system. That's another type of a language. And those two things really can't understand each other, but they have to work together to make your body function properly. And so the thalamus up here in the brain helps to translate. It's kind of, you know, it's like, it's like a translator to help take the hormones, hormonal messages that come in and translate them into instructions for how your body needs to move in the nervous system. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, back to, we talked about the ovaries. I'm referring to like the guide as I'm going through this, so I don't miss anything. <laughs> um, the pancreas, okay, pancreas right here, located in the abdomen below the stomach, and its primary function is to stabilize blood sugar levels. We're gonna do a whole another segment on that. Um, I believe it's the last week of February on balancing blood sugar levels, the importance of that with your overall hormonal health and how to best support your liver. We're gonna talk about natural liver detox and really dive into a bunch of details on how to support your liver. Adrenals and the liver are so, so important in your function as a human being. And we oftentimes don't realize what they really need, um, but it is so simple. And so I'm gonna be doing series on both of those in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. Um, the para parathyroid glands, there's four of them. And let's see if we can, where they are in here. Um, parathyroid glands, yeah. They're located behind the thyroid. So they're not actually shown on here, I'm realizing, but the thyroid is right here and the parathyroid glands are right behind the thyroid. And their primary functions is blood calcium levels. So important there, bone health, muscle contraction and nerves. So as you can imagine, these guys have a very important job as well. Um, we're not gonna focus a ton on that, but know that all the things we're doing for thyroid health and overall hormonal health will definitely help support the parathyroid gland functions. Okay, the pineal gland also up here in this brain region um, it functions to convert signals from the nervous system into hormones. So you know how we were talking about the hypothalamus helping convert hormone signals, that hormonal language into nervous system language. This is like the opposite. When the nervous system sends a signal, the pituitary gland is able to, or not pituitary, sorry, pineal gland is able to translate that into a hormonal message for the endocrine system to be able to do its job. Hope that makes sense. I'm not answering questions right now because I have 
the notes pulled up, but I will pop back over. So if you're dropping anything, I will get to it. <laughs> um, okay, we got a couple more here. My thing's gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this because my screen froze up. Okay, we also have the um, the thyroid, pituit or we're at the pituitary. Pituitary gland also located in the brain region under the hypothalamus, and it functions as the hormone orchestra or the master gland, okay? This produces hormones that control other parts of the endocrine system. So a lot of the different glands in the endocrine system secrete um, at least one or multiple different hormones and they have a specific role. Whereas the pituitary gland secretes, it's like primary function isn't just to secrete hormones that are then going and doing certain jobs, but it is secreting hormones that then trigger the production of hormones from other areas of the endocrine system. Does that make sense? The thyroid gland located in the front of the neck in front of the parathyroid glands. Um, its primary function is every aspect of cell metabolism. It's a very important um, part of your body. And it's also a very common imbalance to have issues surrounding the thyroid. So we will, I don't think we talk about thyroid that much until next month. Um, but most everything I talk about will be beneficial to supporting your thyroid. But there's also some things that are very different about it um, because it has such a big job in this, you know, every aspect of cell metabolism that I do want to give a specific time to kind of just go through it and really make sure that you're supporting it. So if you have been diagnosed with anything related to your thyroid, um, let me know and I'd be happy to like talk more about that and how some of the things that I'm going to be talking about over the next few weeks relate to you specifically because things are a little bit different if you have issues surrounding that um, but everything we're doing should be beneficial as well the thymus gland located behind the sternum functions as part of the immune system and it's primarily only active until puberty for most of its functions okay the testes located in men <laughs> um, external male genitalia i'm sure you guys know that um, function produces sex hormones in response to messages from the pituitary gland. So similar in the aspect of how ovaries function in females, but obviously it's going to produce different types and different amounts of those sex hormones um, in men and versus what the ovaries are creating in women. So I'm going to go back and just show that diagram so you can see if we missed which ones were where. And I'm going to pull back up the comments to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, looks like we're good. All right, awesome. Let me know if you guys have any questions so far. Um, before we move on to the eight primary hormones and breaking that down, I just wanted to, I want to ask you guys, do you feel like something you've been intentional about up until this point is taking care of your endocrine system, all the different parts that we just talked about? Is that something you've been aware of? Is it something that you've been focusing on taking care of? Or is this kind of something you're like, okay, I really haven't been focusing on this, but I'd like to, and I feel like it would be beneficial. <laughs> Let me know in the comments for those of you watching live. Um, so as we talked about with all of this, our hormones are the powerhouse of the body and how we take care of them determines many outcomes of our wellness, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So I'm gonna be sharing um, just a little plug here if you're interested in learning more about all of this. Um, just so you know, I am going to be doing, I have weekly emails that go out where we dive into all of the details specifically on this. I give, you know, VIP access to different live events that I'm doing regarding these topics. Um, I give opportunities for you to engage as a community. 
Um, some of the things will be hosted here in the Facebook group, but if you want even more details into it and you want personalized guidance on implementing what we're talking about, I have prompts and um, different ways for you to respond back to me and get kind of some you know, a little peek at coaching in this area. So if you're interested, you can share your email in the chat or send it to me personally. There's also a link for this um, in our intro video that we did for this group that will give you access to a bundle of free resources, including my weekly emails. And I'm going to talk more about this at the end, but I have um, an opportunity coming up if you're wanting something even more so to focus on hormonal health. Um, and that is my every month club membership. So I'll talk more about that at the end. But let's move on to the eight hormones shaping your life. Hope you guys are still still with me here. It's gonna be a little bit longer probably than a normal training here. So if you can't stand for the whole thing, it's okay. Catch the recording, but hopefully you guys are finding this helpful and interesting. Okay. So why should you care about these eight hormones? The crazy thing about hormones is that we can't see them with the naked eye, yet they are so greatly impacting every aspect of our wellness, every single second of every single day. And the eight hormones I'm going to be covering here in this next portion are really like the powerhouse, the most important parts of the chemical messengers in your body. Okay, these are the ones that are, we're going to refer to them as the dream team, and you'll see why in a minute. And they are very specific, very critical to all parts of your bodily functions. So I'm going to give you a general bio and introduction, and then I'm going to share specific slides breaking down each one and um, looking at them at a deeper level. So estrogen, we're going to call her Miss Femininity, all right? And you'll see why once we get back into that. Um, the second is progesterone, also known as keep calm and carry on. We got cortisol, and we're just going to call him alpha. Um, T3 and T4, they are the thyroid hormones, and they are always on the go, go, go. <laughs> um, pregnenolone, we just call her master. <laughs> testosterone, bringing you all the masculine energy. So we have estrogen with the femininity, and then we got testosterone with the um, masculine side. We have DHEA, which is your very own fountain of youth. I'm sure all of us would love to tap into that. And I always butcher the name when I'm saying this. And androstan, let's call them androgens, okay? on a mission to keep you balanced. So, oh, I see a couple comments here. Janu, I haven't been focusing on this, but I think it would be very beneficial for me and my body. Agreed. <laughs> All right, awesome. I'm glad you think so. So let's break down. We're gonna start with estrogen, the femininity hormone. And estrogen is produced in the ovaries and small amounts are also produced in, by the adrenals and fat cells. So what does estrogen do? Estrogen functions as the female sexual characteristics and it plays a huge role in your menstrual cycle. Um, it also is part of what your cholesterol levels look like and um, functions to make sure that your urinary tract is working properly, that your heart and blood vessels, your skin, your hair, mucous membranes, pelvic muscles, and brain health and function are all optimal. <laughs> so that's a lot. Estrogen is very, very important, um, but there's three different types of estrogen. So they each do different parts within the body. And this is one of the, the reason I put it first is because it's also one of the most like common imbalances. When we talk about imbalances next week, you'll see estrogen is often involved because it's either too high or it's too low. Um, and this fluctuates a lot throughout the hormonal cycle and it fluctuates a lot throughout the lifespan. 
there's three different times of es types of estrogen. Um, E2, which it facilitates the egg release in your menstrual cycle. And that's typically what we think of when we think of estrogen and the role that it plays. But there's also two other kinds. So there's E1, which is a major component um, and what you will see more frequent in the postmenopause state. So actually when you go, excuse me, when you go through menopause, you do not produce as much E2 and you start producing more E1 and they function very differently in the body. This is this transfer of power essentially with these femininity hormones is really what causes a lot of the menopausal symptoms like hot flashes, um, you know, night sweats, all the things that are unpleasant that nobody really wants to experience. Um, you can blame that on the transfer of power from E2 to E1. Um, E3 is another, like it's introduced in another specific part of the lifespan and that is during pregnancy. So it's released from the placenta and it, you know, plays a role in how women feel during that time. So that's the overview on estrogen, femininity hormone. Then we have progesterone, another key component of the female cycle as well. The three main, we're going to talk more about this um, in a couple of weeks, but the three main hormones that are really fluctuating and creating that natural monthly cycle for women are estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So know that these, the amounts of this are not going to stay stable throughout the month. It's going to be going up and down, but you can still support that optimally based off of what phase you're in of the month and of your cycle. And we'll talk more about that in the future. Um, so the keep calm and carry on hormone. This is produced in the corpus luteum and it functions to trigger endometrial lining for potential pregnancy and it protects the brain via the myelin sheaths. Um, it also helps with breast health, cardiovascular health, and it soothes the nervous system. So this is going to help out with some stress response. If your progesterone levels are um, optimal, then you know, it can help soothe some of the, the nervousness within the nervous system. <laughs> that was witty. Okay. Um, cortisol, the alpha hormone. This is produced in the adrenals. And when speaking of stress, this is the one you got to be a little worried about. But we need cortisol. We do. It's necessary for survival. But with excess... Ex or, sorry, but excess with chronic stress, because the more stressed we are, the more increased our cortisol levels are, because this is the hormone that our body produces to protect us. Um, it leads to fat storage around the midsection, and it can cause a whole array of other issues when we have increased cortisol levels. We'll talk more about cortisol when we talk about adrenals in a couple of weeks, um, but know that if you end up having too much cortisol, that's obviously bad. But after a while, your body stops responding the same. And then it thinks that you're cortisol deficient when really your cortisol levels are still very amplified. So that can cause a whole issue. Basically, your body's just not responding to the levels anymore because they've been elevated for so long. So yeah, we'll talk about that more with the adrenal section. But just know the alpha hormone, it's very important. And it's, you know, what oftentimes motivates us to do things and to be able to survive in certain situations. But um, in our day and age where we don't have tigers chasing us all the time, our stress response system is still going off constantly, um, but then it doesn't have a chance to calm back down and be able to get out of that stress zone, which can cause all sorts of issues. Okay, T3 and T4. These are your primary thyroid hormones, and they're the go, go, go hormones. Their functions are to keep us energetic and upbeat. So individuals who have any kind of issues surrounding their T3 and T4 production oftentimes are going to feel fatigued and not energetic. You know, the opposite of energetic and upbeat is basically how you're going to feel if you have issues surrounding these hormones. Um, T3 is the most prominent that we'll be talking about. It's active, um, it's the active form of the thyroid hormone. 
and it's responsible for modulating metabolism, heart function, digestion, muscle control, brain development, and bone maintenance. So a ton of roles within that. So you can see that if T3 is not functioning optimally, which is the case for many, many women, I think it's like 70 to 85% of women have something imbalanced with their thyroid hormone um, production. It could be affecting all of these other areas, um, brain development, bone health, digestion, um, you know, metabolism, which is a whole another discussion in itself. And then we have pregnenolone. And this is the master hormone. It's produced primarily in the, the adrenals, but it's also produced in the ovaries or the testes, the brain, and white blood cells. So it's produced in various different locations, but primarily in the adrenals. And it functions, um, it functions as a precursor of almost all other steroid hormones. And yes, you do produce steroid hormones naturally in your body. It's not just something that you take when you are trying to be an all-star athlete illegally. <laughs> um, but it protects neurons from damage by repairing myelin sheaths. And it improves memory, motivation, mood, sleep, immunity, and PMS and menopause symptoms. We're going to do a whole segment in a little while on PMS and how it doesn't actually exist. Say what? Yeah, okay, tune back in for that. Um, <laughs> but the pregnant alone is very important for all of those. Um, so as you can see, like, you know, memory, motivation, mood, sleep, immunity, PMS, menopause symptoms, like those are all huge areas of our life. And if one is off, there's a good chance that the rest of them are as well. Okay, we're getting close here, you guys. Testosterone, the masculinity hormone. A lot of people think that testosterone is really only found in men. This is not the case. We definitely have testosterone and it plays a huge role in our feminine life. Like in the fact that you menstruate, you have to have testosterone to trigger that. So um, it's produced in the testes or the ovaries and also in the adrenals. We often think of this as a male hormone, but it impacts women greatly as well. Said that. Um, so for women, this is going to be different in how it functions for men, but also similar in some senses. But specifically for women, testosterone functions to help us have healthy libido. It converts fat into muscle, which is great. Um, it keeps our skin supple. It increases bone density. It is essential for a stable mood, um, reducing, well, depending on how much you have, it either reduces or increases stress. <laughs> and it also is essential for cognitive function. And this is really what gives women, um, when their testosterone levels are at a good place, power, motivation, assertiveness, confidence, all of those good feelings that we want to have. It's not just an emotion. Our emotions are so correlated to our hormone production. So oftentimes, if I'm seeing women who are really low in confidence, really low in self-esteem, and, you know, of course, there's lots of components with that from a psychological perspective. Once you've kind of ruled out some of that and worked on that, I also like to get them on um, a nutrition plan that's going to be focusing on making sure they're getting, you know, they're supporting their testosterone production because oftentimes women who are feeling a lot of those feelings, it's not just because of something mentally that's going on. Um, it's often impacted emotionally by your hormonal production. So a little fun fact for you guys on that. DHEA, there's a much longer name for it. I'm not going to say it because all you need to know is that it is the fountain of youth androgen. This is another somewhat male hormone, um, but it also impacts women, especially when it's out of balance. And it's produced in the adrenals and synthesized from cholesterol. So it functions, um, it makes sex hormones and an excess of it can lead to aggression acne, especially acne in the chin and neck region. Um, it, it also can cause like excess hair growth for women. So if you have any kind of hair growth like on your face or on your chest or in other areas that are as not as normal, 
or maybe you're just an extra hairy person like part of that could lead from you having um excess dhea levels or other androgens as well these are just some of the main ones but like there are you know others that i recommend people get tested too if they have certain symptoms and we'll talk more about symptoms next week and how to kind of find out where you lie within um how your hormones are balanced. Of course, the best way to find out is getting them tested, and I'll talk more about how you can do that as well. Um, but there are things you can do to support based off of kind of just a general rule as well. Okay, and then the last we have here is the balancing hormone. And this is produced primarily in the adrenals, but also in the ovaries with the help of the hypothalamus and the pituitary. If you remember the hypothalamus and the pituitary, kind of have a different role in the sense that they give signals for other parts of the endocrine system to produce hormones. Um, so this is one of those situations that when it's produced in the ovaries, it's from the signaling of the hypothalamus and the pituitary producing hormones that then tell the ovaries to produce um, the balancing hormone. Um, okay, the primary functions for women is it, aff it, it affects estrogen and testosterone levels. So this one's really important because we often will try to make sure that certain levels are balanced as far as estrogen is balanced or testosterone is balanced, but we don't always take into a account that there might be other hormones that are impacting estrogen and testosterone and throwing them out of whack. Something I'll talk about more next week is that when you have one hormonal imbalance, you almost always have at least another and oftentimes you have many more. So, because as you can see, like the production of these different ones is very much interacting. It's all just a giant um, mail system, you know? And if one mailman goes to the wrong door and is delivering a package wrong, it could screw up the whole line if he thinks everything then is in that order. I don't know if that was the best analogy, but kind of get what I'm saying, right? Like there's always gonna be more correlations with this. Okay, so those are all of the ones that we're going to talk about. Your hormone dream team, estrogen, just to review. Estrogen is Miss Femininity, progesterone, also known as keep calm and carry on. We have cortisol that we call alpha. Um, T3 and T4, they're just always on the go, go, go. We have pregnenolone, which is the master hormone. Testosterone, bringing you all the masculine energy. DHEA, which is your very own fountain of youth, and then androstin. Damn, okay, I'm just butchering that every time I say it today. I don't know what the deal is, you guys. On a mission to keep you balanced, all right? I honestly don't have to like say the names of a lot of these oftentimes. I just read them or write them, so. <laughs> okay, so this is what your dream team looks like when you when they are all fully supported, when they're taken care of, when they're able to function at their very best. But what happens when one isn't properly cared for? We kind of just talked about this. The others all will go into overdrive to try and help compensate. And the only issue is, is that each member has a very specific role. And when one or more don't fulfill their calling, the whole system is thrown out of whack. It's like a, you know, like a sports team. I like to think of things in like the sense of volleyball because I am a volleyball player. I coach volleyball. And so if you've seen a volleyball team play before, you know that there's like usually six people on the court, right? And each of them has kind of this region of the volleyball court. And when the volleyball comes over, like they know that if it goes to their region of the court, they're the one that's in charge of getting it. And you have different people who play the roles. You have a setter who gets this, you know, or a passer who gets the first pass. You have a setter who gets the second. You have a hitter who gets it back over. And if one of them is not doing their job properly, they lose the point, right? It's kind of like that. Like, think about it as this. If you're not fully supporting all of your hormones, your hormonal dream team is really just losing game after game after game, which is not a good thing. <laughs> um we don't want our body to feel like it's constantly losing and constantly trying to catch up. So how can we support them all the best? Um, figure out where the imbalance is and coach them back into being able to win and do their best. So we're going to be talking about that um, weeks to come. As I said, today is just setting the foundation, helping you to kind of understand how this is all functioning, how this is all working, 
so that next week we can start to understand, okay, where might you have an imbalance? What are some common symptoms of imbalances? And I'm also going to be going over what I call a hormone archetype. And I'm very excited about this. This is something that I've created all, you know, very original idea, I think. Um, but essentially, it's going to be a way for you to be able to kind of categorize yourself to where when I'm sharing case studies, when I'm sharing information regarding how to support your hormones, you know, okay, this is my hormone archetype. This is how I should probably be eating, how I should be exercising, how I should be making sure I'm supporting my hormones because everyone is so different, right? Everyone's so different. Um, okay. Make sure I got here. I got a couple questions for you guys. <laughs> for anybody who is on here, or if, even if you're watching the recording, if you want to share with me, you can share it in the chat, or you can email me, or you can send me a private message, and or you can just write it down in your journal. But if you want some specialized feedback from me and some guidance in this, I had a few questions for you. Have you noticed anything that might be your body signaling that something is off with your endocrine system. And we're gonna talk more about what symptoms really mean, but if you, if you were here for the first part and you were listening to me explaining the, my experience with all of the things that I had going on with my body, um, you know, my dizzy spells, my passing out, my, um, you know, the, the acne, the, all these different issues that I was having, digestive issues, like all of the things. If you have anything that you feel like and you, you know innately, like this is not normal, but you don't necessarily have somebody telling you there's something wrong, write down what you think those symptoms, what those things might be. And, th and you say, I don't know if this is my hormones, but maybe it is. And if you want to share in the chat, you can. If you want to just send it to me, you can. Do you feel overall like your hormone dream team is functioning optimally? If you don't have any of those symptoms and you feel great, there's a good chance your hormones are doing awesome, which is great. Have you ever had your hormone levels tested, specifically including the eight primary hormones? Surprisingly enough, a lot of hormone panels that are done are not always including these eight primary hormones. I had a lot of things tested when I was looking at my hormones originally, and I think only like three of them were of these eight hormones that I had done. And so there, of course, there's lots of other hormones that are involved in your well-being, but these are ones that are specifically very important to the primary functions of a female body person. Are you desiring to learn more about hormonal imbalances and balancing them naturally? I'm just curious, like if you're not, let me know that too, because it's not for everyone. Uh, but if you are, I wanna make sure I'm supporting you in this. And then more specifically, thinking about those specific symptoms, do you struggle with any of the following? Do you struggle with fatigue, with PMS? with acne, with skin issues, with weight gain or weight loss? Do you have irregular periods or very painful periods? Um, do you have infertility issues or are you going through perimenopause or menopause? Do you have brain fog? Do you have anxiety or are your limbs, are your hands and your fingers and your toes always cold? Do you get hot flashes? Do you have constant headaches or migraines? Do you have any unpleasant symptoms at all? <laughs> Write them down, drop them in the chat, send me an email, send me a personal message. Like, I, I want you to know as we're talking about advocating for yourself that none of those things are normal. Yes, they are common, but they are not normal. And you do not have to put up with them, okay? The whole goal of this is to help you realize that you can understand your body. You can educate yourself. You can know what you need to do to support yourself. And you can really take care, take charge of your own well-being. And so I just want to leave you with that as that is kind of our, our finishing out moment that you are so capable of this. And 
I'm excited to talk about these things and to support you in this area. And I hope that even if you've heard some of these things before, this was kind of a good refresher to bring it to the forefront of your mind that you can start thinking about this. And even if nothing's come into the mind right now of like what might be a symptom or what might be something I'm not doing to support my hormones, maybe something will be coming up for you in you know, the next couple of days as you're just paying attention and tuning in and listening to your body. <clears throat> Don't ignore these things. I think we get so used to just putting up with negative feelings that we forget that those aren't normal and that we don't have to deal with them. Um, a lot of my issues that I had, I didn't realize how bad they were until they weren't there anymore. <laughs> and then as I started feeling better, I'm like, wow, like for years I put up with digestive issues. Like for years I was always bloated and like for years I've had different skin issues and like I never knew that I could not have that, that I did. I never knew that I could you know, eat a meal and not have rashes. I never knew that I could not have a painful, horrible period. So just want to encourage you that you can feel amazing. And I want to be here to support you to do that. So looking forward to sharing more with you this next week on hormonal imbalances, finding your hormone archetype, and then starting to look at some things we can do to help balance your hormones naturally. All right, I'm going to close out here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you and just supporting you on this journey. Bye.